Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where this week and, and previous weeks and, and weeks to come, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we've been going through the Daniel Craig James Bond filmology. If you could leave a like, that would be great, because this week we're hitting up big time the movie Quantum of Solace. That's right. The much-anticipated but somewhat much maligned follow-up two years after mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to Casino Rale, you know? When are you going to stop saying that? When are you going to make me stop saying it? Right now, I'll flip this <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drown you in oil, bitch. <laughs> Before I get into like that, what this movie was originally supposed to be and mm. the very publicly troubled production mm-hmm. and the reason why it is the Thank way it is. Thank God troubling James Bond productions are a thing of the past. I know, right? Uh, you, you can say the thing. The thing that you've always hated about this movie, the opening thing. James. <laughs> Here he goes. Upon seeing this movie in cinemas, I was immediately offside because obviously this movie is supposed to take place immediately after Casino Royale. Yes, the first James Bond movie to ever pick up immediately after. Okay, Mm. but here's the thing, James. In between the last one and this one, the costume designer changed from Lindy Hemming to Louise Frogley and Mm -hmm. the supplier of James Bond suits changed from Brioni to Tom Ford. That's true. Obviously, James. And they were like, well, let's change his his three-piece navy suit that has sort of a white track stripe. Mm. We'll change it to a two-piece navy suit with a blue pinstripe, and nobody will (laughs) notice. Nobody will notice, James, that it's a different suit with slightly different colours and fabrics, and (laughs) he's taken his vest off, apparently. I think you could have got away with it if you left a vest in it. So what you're telling me, director of this movie, who I think is Mark Forster, (laughs) that James Bond got in his car and he took his jacket off and then he took his waistcoat off. Yes. And then he put his jacket back on. But it was a different jacket. Why would you do that? (laughs) Who does that? A psychopath. A psychopath would. (laughs) But also, if that happened, show me that scene. I want to see him do it in the car in the middle middle of a chase. I mean, that being said, it is a better suit. So it's a nice oh, suit. Oh, well, fair so, yeah. enough. Yeah, well, so it fits him better. Yeah, it, it is a, it, it's, it's a good-looking suit. He's a good-looking man. Yeah. And we're not here to argue that he isn't. No. Yeah. But apart from that, um, I actually quite like this movie. Yeah, look, let's talk a bit about how it started. because this Except, obviously, there's a scene <laughs> where he wears a black belt and a pair of brown suede shoes. What are you thinking, Excuse Bond? Excuse me? Yeah. Everybody knows belt shoes. They, they, they match. Everybody, if you've got a snakeskin belt. Snakeskin snake shoes skin and hats. <laughs> That's what you must do. That's the rules. <laughs> So this script was originally not intended to be as much of a sequel to Casino Royale. Mm -hmm. However, because of the writer's strike, which affected a bunch of movies at the time, including Transformers 2, how much? (laughs) Probably not that much. Uh, So they only had the bare bones of a script, very Mm -hmm. early drafts. So it was up to Daniel Craig and director Mark Forster Mm -hmm. to rewrite scenes like on the fly. Day of, As they were filming. So Just hunkering down in that gas-filled hotel just <laughs> plunking away on their Sony Vios, probably. Exactly. So just, that, Those fumes getting in there, getting <laughs> in your brains. So even though a lot of the action sequences in this were all mapped out, and again, only two years after, so it's a quick turnaround regardless of the writer's strike, uh-huh. they had to fill in a lot of the gaps, and that's why so much of this leans into Casino Royale. And on top of that, normally the director liked a 14-week edit. This got a five-week edit. Okay. It ended up being the shortest James Bond ever at an hour 46. Thank God. But I think knowing all that, and if you watch these two back-to-back, mm-hmm. they work well together. But this doesn't work outside of Casino Royale. At the end of Casino Royale, James, his sleeves have four buttons on them. <laughs> and at the start of this one, they have five buttons. Maybe put an extra button on As it. if I wouldn't notice. <laughs> Mark Forster. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think as if you are watching them back to back, it yeah. sort of has a, uh, a you know... A, 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 it's not as good. No. It's not close. No. It's, it's not even close to being the worst. It, it's not even in the lowest echelon of Bond movies, I think. Like, I don't still... think it's the worst Daniel Craig Bond movie. There we go. Which, right? we'll, which we will get to. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that is kind of nonsensical yeah. to it. Sure. We'll get to it. But, yeah, uh, definitely. You know, it's it's pretty, and it borrows pretty heavily from, again, some hot, hot cinematic stuff of the time. Definitely. Uh, well, the other thing that it does borrow, the idea of a price hike with water, that was a real thing that happened in Bolivia, except the price hike that happened in real life. It was, was, was three times. That's right. Yeah, it three, was three, yeah, and in this it's twice. I think, again, because, you know, the Bourne movies were quite popular at the time. They should call this bloody James Bourne. Very oh, nice. I should have added that into last week's episode. 
Every time we say James Bond, I say James Bourne. Anyway, well, sorry, go on. Um, I think they were like, well, we shouldn't do, you know, death lasers and underwater bases and all that sort of stuff. We make, we'll make it a little more realistic. But they wouldn't. They didn't even go hard enough to be like, we'll make we'll make this uh, water crisis. We won't even make it as sinister as the real life one. It's an odd choice because in a fictional scenario, which turned out to be a real scenario. Mm-hmm. Just, you could say any number. It could be any number of times as much as it uh-huh. would have cost, you know? It's yeah. not, it doesn't really change the narrative that much, you know? <laughs> I mean, it does if, if Dominic Green were to be like, I'm going to make water one jillion times more expensive. You'd be like, there's something wrong with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's clearly something wrong with this guy. Yeah. He's not an imposing villain. I think that is probably the number one problem with, with this particular movie. He's not an imposing villain. Because he's a little frogman? He's yes. They had to give him a crowbar and a fire axe in the final <laughs> battle between him and Bond for him to even stand a moment's chance against, you know, the, the hulking up, gorilla that is James Bond. He ends up putting it into his own foot or whatever yeah. happens. Yeah. But his his henchmen aren't impressive. He doesn't have a jaws like No. You he's know, got that dude with a wig who gets tripped by strawberry fields forever. Yeah. yeah. Tripsy wigsy. Sure. I'm so sorry. So the idea behind the character of Dominic Green is that he has no distinguishing features. Amazing. Yeah, and I think they nailed it because every other Bond villain, they've got a scar or a hook hand or a set of um, a set of big steel feet or something. Sure, yeah, you know, <laughs> Steelsy feetsy. Steelsy feetsy. I, I kind of like that idea that he is is anybody, mm-hmm. but I don't think wait it, iron balls. <laughs> But they're referring to the balls of his feet. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, he has to explain that at dinner parties. Yeah. Hi, I'm Iron Balls. <laughs> Excuse me? The balls of my feet. Oh, how elegant. <laughs> you really pivot mm-hmm. at a moment's notice. So the story of this uh, is, because they couldn't do Spectre, and because one of the James Bond stories is called Quantum of Solace, they mm-hmm. went, why not? Yeah. Let's do this story, I but guess. Quant- but it, it, Name bears, only. it bears no relation. It, it bears no relevance to... Yeah. The original short story. I'm not even sure Bond's in the original short story. <laughs> I think it might just be some dude telling a story to another dude. Well, that sounds terrific. Mm-hmm. That's storytelling, isn't yeah, it? Just yeah, one yeah, dude yeah. talking to another dude? That's right, in a way. Yeah. So quantum is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I like that idea. An organisation so secret that they could have somebody who's been working for M for 18 years. In theory, it is, it is good. But? But in practice, I don't believe anybody involved in quantum in this movie would be capable of maintaining that secret or being really competent in any way. Because it's they're just, at an opera talking over earpieces. It's just an assortment of like well-to-do billionaires and, mm. and, and these incompetent henchmen yeah. with no distinguishing features. Yes. I'm like, I don't, I don't buy this. All of you would have slipped up by now. You'll notice. You would have, you would have tried to impress somebody at a cocktail party being yeah. like, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm part of a little thing called, we call it quantum. What do you what, think about that? What does it stand for? What do you think for? about iron balls over here? We like him. But what does it stand for? Nothing, apparently. <laughs> sure. It's not an acronym. But of course, it is worked in later that quantum mm-hmm. is part of Spectre. Yeah. When Spectre, when the rights to Spectre got, right. got returned to uh, to MGM, here's something that I thought was weird. Remember when uh, M gets shot at and she just does a little run out of the room? Mm-hmm. It looks like she gets shot. She does get shot. Is that that's a weird edit, right? That's like something they a story point that they dropped. Maybe because it feels like a reshoot where <laughs> for other she definitely does get shot. That's what I thought, and I, I guess they were like she didn't. <laughs> no, I think they probably just like oh, she probably had a bulletproof vest. What about the other guy who got shot? Wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest. Yeah, well, that's why he got shot more. What about this guy who who apparently been M's personal bodyguard for five years? You gonna you gonna shoot Bond or anything? Yeah, just shoot a random guy. <laughs> just shoot a random guy. Shoot anyone. Yeah. One thing I do like about this movie though is the relationship between Bond and Camille. Mm-hmm. And I think what's interesting is that. They're both so bent on revenge. They have no interest in each other. Oh, yeah. Like they share a kiss at the end, but it's not really anything. Yeah, They're yeah. just so laser focused on killing the person <laughs> or people that have wronged them. Yeah, yeah. So that's why they're aligned. There is no other reason. Like mm-hmm. they don't need to have that kind of chemistry. It's just like, we're just going to walk through the desert until we find the people that we need to kill. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's very interesting. And then they share a kiss at the end and they're like, it's not as thrilling if you've already mur- murdered all the people you need to murder. <laughs> We do get a couple of returning characters, which again is unusual mm-hmm. for a James Bond movie. Uh, Felix Leiter. Yeah, who I don't think we mentioned at all last week. No, but terrific. Yeah. And I'm glad he's in these. Mm-hmm. He's just fun. Mm. And he's also, he's fairly competent. He's the most sane man in the CIA. He's very seems. competent, but he, he's clearly been worn down by the drama of it all. Yeah. It's just like, ah, oh, let, 
Let David Harbour do his thing. Oh my God, what a surprise. You're right? 33 year old David Harbour looking just fresh faced and ready to go. When they said his name, I thought they said Mr. Bean. Oh, hi, this is Gregory Bean. It's, <laughs> Mr. it's Mr. Bean. It is Mr. Bean. That's yeah. correct, yes. Uh, and then, of course. But can you imagine? <laughs> I think it'd be a little something like this. He's silent, obviously. Mr. Bean doesn't yeah. really talk. So. This is a still image of Mr. Bean. Just imagine he's doing some spy. Oh, Johnny English. I forgot. We don't have the footage. We don't have the footage. We can't, we can't afford it. No, sorry. <laughs> and which movie do we use? You know what I mean? There's mm. so much footage to choose from. We'll be paralyzed by choice from yeah, the Johnny yeah. English trilogy. No, we're never going to talk about it. Uh, what, what I also liked was uh, Mathis Returns. And holds, oh, yes. <laughs> and holds no ill will, even though Bond got him captured and tortured. Because if you remember at the end of Casino Royale, at the end when he's cleared, Bond goes... Yeah, maybe not. Just, just, just do some more torture on him. <laughs> There's heaps more torture. Let's yeah. see how that goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> when Bond pulls him out of the boot of his car, yep. I thought he was dead. He's not dead. And then he uses him as a human shield. Yes, but then he regains his dignity when Bond chucks him in a bin. <laughs> Chucks his body in a bin and he's like, I think Mathis would have wanted it this way. Would he? <laughs> you I don't know, know if he did. You know, and he's like, we forgive each other, don't we? I don't think you both need to forgive each other. <laughs> yeah. I think there's one more than the other needs also, to Also, if I was like, that. yeah, Bond, I'd forgive you. I'd only be saying that because I'm like, this guy will leave me in the street if I don't say that. <laughs> so, yeah, Well, he does regardless. I think there's some pretty decent action stuff in this. There's a hotel room fight, which is very Jason Bourne-esque. There's a car chase. There's a plane when they and they jump out of plane. Uh, there's there's ropes. Remember ropes? Boy, do I. Yeah, but of course the thing that everybody remembers. From Why this, did it have to be ropes? He says his famous line. But I think the thing that the only thing that I really remember from this action scene wise is the exploding hotel. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Look, I think the opening chase scene is actually written. It's it's. Oh, it's all good. It's all now, yeah. now that now that some of my rage has subsided over you know, the changing of the suit. I can see it with more objective eyes. And I think that that initial car chase is really good. Yep. You know, there's trucks tumbling all over the place. Apparently it was the most locations ever for filming a Bond movie at the time. I don't know how much that, is, that has changed. What I also like about the, the hotel, the exploding hotel at the, mm -hmm. at the end where every room has a, has a thing you can shoot and it will explode. Because mm -hmm. it, it cools the room. That's in the brochure. <laughs> Everybody in that hotel, as it's exploding, is just going ham on each other. You know what I mean? Sure, yeah. It's just, you know, uh, Camille and the general having a fisty cuff. Bond is fighting a tiny little frog man. He's you like, know? may as well. Yeah. <laughs> Good as Eddie. General sewn up. May as well fight this guy, sure. Here's something interesting about the character of Dominic Green. He was described as not knowing how to fight, so James Bond would be more surprised. Sometimes anger can be more dangerous. I'm going to f fight like in school. <laughs> yeah, because that's what would surprise James Bond, a man who can't fight. <laughs> exactly. You wouldn't know how to come at him, you know? There's a moment in this movie where he's at the opera. He's taken, uh, he's taken uh, a bunch of photographs of the backs of people's heads with his Sony Ericsson phone and has mm. therefore been able to determine what their faces look like yeah. due to Sony Ericsson biotechnology. That's right. And then Dominic Green and his henchmen, they've been made so they all leave like in a big gang Yeah. and they get into the lobby and James Bond is there and just the bug-eyed fear on Dominic Green's face <laughs> as he sees Bond there. And I'd be, I was like, Dominic Green, calm down. you got all your boys here, you know? But he's like, no, whoa, 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 whoa. He does, I mean, he doesn't really have all these boys there, does he? He um, doesn't. There's not a competent one in the No, that's true. In the bunch. If they pan down, he would have been peeing himself. But Absolutely. Yeah, just <laughs> settle down. i got to say also, I really enjoy his death, how Bond's like, here's a can of oil, let's see how far you get before you drink it. I can't believe he carried it. I can't believe he took it with him. Right? You wouldn't carry it, right? Not, not po pointless, <laughs> you would have thought. Did you find, though? I would have said, Bond, give me a, give me a bottle of water. <laughs> That's, you've, you've clearly thrown me the wrong the wrong container. I don't, I don't have a can opener for this. <laughs> I'm going to have to chew through the top like a rat. <laughs> One thing that I didn't find satisfying in this, though, mm -hmm. was the reveal of Vesper's boyfriend mm. and the revenge that Bond gets or doesn't get yeah, right. in uh, discovering what he's up to. I just found it was a bit like, oh, it's just this guy, is it? All right. Oh, yeah, he's doing the thing again. He's doing the, the catfishing thing again mm -hmm, to sure, Canada. Sure, sure. Just yeah. didn't really... And, like, Bond doesn't kill him? Why not? Kill everyone else. Kill Mathis, a man <laughs> that you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did you feel about that, though, as a conclusion? Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really. I mean, we don't really see anything about that guy. Like, he's not built up as a as a villain in any in any real sense. So yeah. I never really, I didn't really feel like any kind of uh, at least have him like pop up a bit during the movie. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? sure. Yeah. I mean, there was a moment there where like his new lover mm. uh, is informed by Bond that you know he that he's also got that sort of Algerian yes. love knot, and I think there's a moment which is like, did did he do that to you as well? Is that <laughs> <laughs> he goes that way though, doesn't he? Sure Apparently, does. we'll talk about it next week. But right now we're going to talk about, cue the music, whatever that is, uh, licensed to trivia. <laughs> Great. Don't know what the music is. Is it a, is it a MIDI version of, of the James Bond theme? Yeah, Up okay. to Ben. He has full creative control. Okay, so an early draft of the script involved James Bond discovering that Vesper Lind had a child by a previous relationship uh, who had been kidnapped by Quantum. Oh. There you go. Just did someone else for him to kill, I guess. Uh, or accidentally. Here's a fun fact, James. Sure. Uh, Bond's shoes from the end of uh, Casino Royale, they mm. change from a derby and they become an Oxford at really? the start of Quantum of Solace, yeah. Must have kicked them off for driving. I bet if you looked next to the pedals, yeah, yeah. there's a loose pair of shoes down there. <laughs> he's got two pairs of shoes. That's what, that's what I think he's yeah, up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gal Gadot very nearly got the role of Camille. Mm -hmm. uh, after missing out, though, it did inspire her to quit law school and pursue acting as a career. Really? Yeah. Uh, the only James Bond film also where James Bond isn't captured or taken prisoner by one of the villains. He is, of course, briefly captured by MI6, very mm. briefly. Yeah. Um, but he, you know. Goes rogue. Kills some people. <laughs> Gets yeah. out of that scenario. There's also a deleted ending. I don't know if you know about this. Where James Bond dispatches Mr. White in a gun barrel sequence, which then sets up the next movie. Oh. This was, though, removed so the film wasn't compelled to continue this story. I see. I mean, which it did anyway, Inspector. But for the next movie, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't tie in. So, of course, Mr. White does return uh, mm -hmm. down the line. In the scene where Bond discovers uh, Agent Strawberry Fields' oil-covered body, mm -hmm. her corpse is positioned the same way as uh, Jill Masterson's body. Remember, with the gold and the gold the finger? Gold finger, yeah. Gold mm -hmm. finger. That was Jim Rutterton's, uh first day on set. Was it really? Yeah, they were like, well, you got the job? Here we go. How did she enjoy it? Loved it. <laughs> I bet she did. Uh, Una Chaplin. You might be familiar with. I'm not. She's popped up in, I think, Black Mirror episodes. Ah, I see. She's also, uh, she married Rob Stark. She got Red Weddings. Oh, yep, yep. Okay, I'm on board now. Uh, she's the granddaughter of Sir Charles Spencer Chaplin, who you might be familiar with. I'm um, not. He's, uh, he's Charles, Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> oh, I see. Right, right, right. Okay. She's the, she works in the Exploding Hotel. Ah. Yeah. And. Uh, be be uh, pretty anxiety inducing, I would imagine. Yeah. Those things would be rattling, just like an old water heater, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. But, and people would always be checking in. They'd be like, can I smoke in my room? No. You could use solar power. Why are you using explosions? <laughs> Don't know. Don't know either. Maybe there's no sunlight in the desert. Yeah, maybe. Who's visiting that hotel? He's like, I've got to go to the desert, <laughs> to this exploding hotel. <laughs> uh, here's something. This isn't so much trivia as mm -hmm. just something I found in trivia, which is cruel. Oh. Villains in the James Bond movies often have some kind of physiological dysfunction or trait that makes them distinguishable. True. We've talked about it. Uh, iron balls, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, for this movie, some may have thought that there was none for Dominic Green, but arguably critics noted his distinguishable and menacing bug eyes, which <laughs> do set him in the company of Bond villains of old. So just to th just this man, just how he looks mm. every day yeah, yeah, is yeah. odd enough for some people to be like, what a freak! He looks sure. like he looks like all the freaks that came before him. No makeup required. Remember Jaws with his horrific mechanical teeth? Well, you're just as ugly. <laughs> and of course, we do need to talk about, as we do every week, whether or not James Bond has gone rogue this time around. Yeah. And and if he retires. Okay, let me think. Okay, so he definitely goes rogue. Yeah. Again, almost immediately. Yeah, what I liked about uh, when he goes rogue, M's like, you can't be trusted. I can't be trusting you. Then he gets in the elevator and he beats up everybody. And then they Betray, meet up. Betraying her trust. Exactly. And then he runs away and then she's like, I trust him. I think he's onto something. <laughs> yeah, you're just saying that because he beat up all your dudes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just got out of hand. Sure. So, but does he retire? He doesn't retire. Well, at the end also, she's like, welcome back. Mm. And he's like, I never left. So it makes me think that she thought he'd retired. <laughs> okay, sure. I think it counts. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. He's just doing his own thing. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's not retirement. Yeah. It's more of a. Well, look, I think I think currently we've got we've got two in the going rogue column and one yep. one officially going going retired. I agree. Now the budget for this movie 
It was actually the most expensive Bond movie ever. Is that because they changed his tie from Casino Royale to the start of Quantum of Solace? It would have definitely factored in. I think so. Uh, it blew out to $225 million, but it ended up making $591 million, which is only $3 million less than Casino Royale. Huh. And I do also wonder if that's because you can squeeze in more sessions of this in a day as opposed to Casino Royale, which is like 40 minutes longer. You know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Get your packet, you get more butts in seats. Mm -hmm. This, even though, again, not received well, it's not anybody's favourite, it's still the fourth highest overall box office for a Bond movie ever. Very good. So, yeah, there you go. Mm. Oh, my goodness, it's time for yet another exciting James Bondian adventure, Mason. I'm so excited. That's right. Let's do this. It's J James Bond's life's a non stop thrill ride. <laughs> what are we going to do this time? We're going to retire? Mm, yes. Just shamble aimlessly down the streets of London. <laughs> Go back to your boring apartment with nothing in it. <laughs> Just icing down bad knees. Uh, so, no, this game I mentioned very briefly last week is the PS2 version of Quantum of Solace. And unlike the version we played last week, which is a first-person shooter, this is developed by Eurocom, mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. did a bunch of James Bond titles, including some of the best. Okay, and, and go on. And including James Bond Legends. And um, there seems to be more of, to that sentence. Well, they did um, they did the N64 Tomorrow Never Dies one. Tomorrow, okay. tomorrow isn't enough. Yeah, we sure, looked at sure. It. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. Terrific stuff. Anyway, so what I'm going to load up now is the chase through the streets that ends in, the, in that rope shooting finale. Don't expect many ropes, though. Okay. okay. Just one to the nuts. Just one to the nuts. This. Exactly. It starts with James Bond climbing out of the sewer, <laughs> which is what, which is where I like to think he's from, like initially. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> A sort of troll-like creature. Yeah. <laughs> this he, he emerged in, in MI6 headquarters out of a. <laughs> Like a, like out of a out of a burst pipe, and they're like, "Well, we've got to use this guy for murders." Uh, so, uh, it, obviously, the, the big difference between this and the other one is it's a third ba third person cover based shooter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what, and what's interesting is that a lot of the time these versions on PlayStation Two they have like odd mechanics. Okay. Uh, but this one tries to replicate like Gears of War. Oh, so it's a cover shooter. Yeah, of sorts. and it's. Like, technically, it's, like, quite impressive. Like, it looks quite good, sure, especially yeah, yeah. considering, like, a bunch of crunch which happened, like, around this. I'm enjoying the brick textures. Yeah, both it's on good his, stuff. Both on his head and on the wall. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, the hit detection is atrocious. Mm. And it really makes it difficult to do anything. I don't know if you hit that guy at all, to be honest, but he died, so yeah. it must have... I, I like your, bit, your, your really huge targeting reticule. I yeah, but, that's exciting. but it's so loose, though. Like, it it's is, so yeah. loosey-goosey. To make, But I, obviously, you, you're on the controls right now. Yeah. Loose is in, it's easy? Or no, it's, loose it's is in, like, okay. you, can, you can have someone, like, just dead to rights, mate. Mm -hmm, sure. And then you'll just miss. Huh. Like, this is a checkpoint because you're about to see an amazing cinematic, Mason. I'm very excited. Here we go. i got to shoot out the tires of this bloke. Oh, we got some, we got some Max Payne I've bullet missed. time. I've definitely missed. No, you definitely. I think you got something. <laughs> oh, no, mission failed. My mistake. I think you have to get both tires. Okay, the nadir <laughs> of video game checkpoints is when you have to like defeat a bunch of randos, fight a boss, or do a terrible quick time event, and then yep. you die, and then you have to go back and go fight do, all do the that. guys again. And you got to watch all the cinematics as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And then eventually you're just like, can I just run through these guys? <laughs> And then you start getting worse. Yeah, exactly. Because you lose confidence you, you get in yourself. Your head and, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, is this game getting worse or am I getting worse? <laughs> and the answer is it's both. Both, exactly. Uh, you do like blind fire. Yep. The cover based mechanics, even though they do a lot of things that we've seen in other games, really awkward. Yeah. Like just right. really like not quite right. Somebody going to turn that bloody car alarm off? Yeah, I know, right? Annoying. Can you, get, can you put one bullet in it and see what happens? I don't want to waste this shotgun. It's a good. It's a good uh... <laughs> yeah, so if this was done. No. Wow. So this was done in a pinch because, as we mentioned last week with the last game, uh -huh. they didn't have any of the story beats or anything. They were just going off vaguely what they were told about quantum and leaks. Yeah, right. But this was another level to that because they were going through Treyarch and, and also the, and so the company that developed the first-person game. So they yeah, didn't right, really right. know what was going to happen in the movie, <laughs> which, again, is why half of this game, more than half of this game, is um, Casino Royale. And darkened corridors. And darkened corridors, yeah. It's like, yeah, he'll probably fight a guy in a room. Yeah. If we ever figure out what that room is, we can lighten it up and you'll, we'll see it. We'll put some textures on it. <laughs> but until then, he probably, he'll probably fight some guy in a, in a, in a brick-lined corridor. Exactly. Why not? You know what I was thinking just now, James? What were you thinking well, just There's now? no way for you to know because you, you can't read my mind. But if you could, you'd know that I was thinking they should do a Hitman-style game. Like James Bond. Like, 
What? That? Are you are you joking right now? Have they not done that? No, because the developers of Hitman are making a James Bond game. Oh, <laughs> maybe maybe we've covered that on our podcast. Mission failed. Come on, man! You killed so many people there. So <laughs> the developers of Hitman are making. Yeah, Hitman. perfect. And That's it's terrific. It's going to be in the style of the Spider-Man franchise. Whereas it's a web it's, swinging, yeah, web swinging. Whoa! No, where it's your own, it's their own version of James Bond. So they're not ah, tied to any terrific any, era or yeah. or, or uh, you know celebrity actor mm. base or whatever. That's exactly, cool. and they can make him like the literary Bond. They can give him that look. That's right, and that's what they've done, been doing with the comics at the moment as well, mm-hmm. uh, which I think works much better. Yeah, they, there are, there are some sort of to yeah, there are some whatever. sort of '60s ones, but there are some sort of modern ones. Yeah. It's also like it's the book Bond. Yeah, essentially. exactly. And it's so, interesting as well because the, God, the most recent Hitman cover. game, I think, has a has a sort of Knives Out esque level. Oh, does it? So you have to go in and you, you you have to kill somebody in like a mansion where a murder has taken place. <laughs> but you can also solve the murder if you want. Oh, really? Yeah. So is it you? <laughs> yeah, some of them are you. Um, but but it's sort of uh, that's interesting because Daniel Craig, as yep. we know. He's a murderer. <laughs> but also, he was in Knives Out. So he was in cool. Knives Out as the murderer. Mm. Yeah. In a donut hole. One day, James, you'll get around this, this corner. I, I've never got stuck here before. It doesn't bode well for the rest <laughs> of this uh, this playthrough. <laughs> sometimes it hits, so yeah. I'm like, but sometimes it, it quits on the hitting mechanics. Yeah, no, 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 sure. Come on. Is that what the term hit it and quit it means? I, that's exactly what it means. Well, thought, it yeah. stems from this game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Prove us wrong, internet. You yeah. can't. Come on, pop out. So what happens if you run out of bullets? Uh, you do. You just run out. You got to hit people. Oh, you got. You do have fists though. It isn't a case. No, you just got it. You click. You hit them with a gun. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, wrong way. That seems. That seems sort of James Bond esque. Run, James Bond. Oh God. It, it, see what I mean? It's so awkward. Mm. Stop. Put your gun away, you dipshit. There we go. Don't sneak. There he is. You're not about sneaking. No. You're about you definitely, thuggery. You definitely <laughs> shot that guy in the back of the head, and yet he lives. Yeah, he's with the, your last bullet. I'm not supposed to kill him yet, so right. it's not going to let me. And there he goes. Whatever that guy's name is, who came to M's barbecues or whatever. Remember from uh, the yeah. movie? Yeah, we, we've yeah. just been talking about it. The guy, <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy who was the guy who would go to the barbecue and he would take the tongs off you and it'd be yep. like, "No, I'll I'll turn these sausages." Oh, that's my favorite guy because I don't like barbecuing mm. and, I, and I don't want the criticism. Of barbecuing. Well, that's, how like, he, that's how he ingratiates himself to you. <laughs> You're like, oh, thank God. I trust you with my life. Watch the physics. Whatever you... Pot plant falls over. <laughs> I mean, you did go entirely through it, <laughs> and then it fell over, but I understand, sure. If don't hate the player, hate the game, Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know so what that So this means. game? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay. The game Quantum of Solace? Yeah. James Bond is on another adventure, mm. isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Ready for stunts? Yeah. I knew you were. Mm. Are you ready for checkpoints? No. Uh, I don't know what to do about that. All right, you got no bullets. Oh, I you got, got some bullets. One. I got this one. Okay. <laughs> get out of here, you mug. Get out of here. Get out of it. <laughs> Can you pistol whip somebody while you still have bullets? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, great. So, but it's not a very, like, the mechanic isn't great. <laughs> so, like, I don't often do it because I'll just miss and then they'll kill me. Great. Yeah. Terrific stuff. Ah, uh, the perfect opportunity to kill this man. Or shoot him in the leg. Drop the gun, Mitchell, now. Or shoot him in the head because you're this version of yeah, James yeah, Bond, yeah. but that's that's what you do. So we're about to get a boss battle of sorts. Oh, Eggman? <laughs> is this Eggman? It's not Eggman. It's the oh. man you were seeing just then. Huh. That man, whatever his name okay. is. Mm. But he's injected himself with some sort of compound that makes him really big. Yes. And he's got a series of shields on him. You have to shoot away <laughs> all the shields. <laughs> it's actually, I think, it's, it's funny and different. Okay. And you'll see why in a minute. Cause you don't need- oh, because in the in the movie, mm. they're all hanging off ropes and yeah. spinning. We don't do any of that. Oh, that would be terrific. Nah, it's I think it's better. So what I what I have to do, see how he's I when it, wherever I move, he moves the opposite. Oh. So I just get him above a thing, and then I just <laughs> crush him with it. Just like just shoot environmental hazards onto him. Nice. <laughs> and I just do that until terrific until it's over. Now you got a guy up top. I nah, think it doesn't matter. Who cares? Okay, great. Yeah. See, now he goes here, and he's like, "I've got you, James Bond." But if anything. I've got him. <laughs> yeah. How did Mitchell? Oh, how, right? did, how did you survive <laughs> eight years in MI6 if you're just letting environmental hazards drop on you? You know, lunacy. Guess they didn't teach you that at Quantum no, slash Spectre when the licenses uh, is allowed again. It's true. All right, I think I got him. Nice. Now it says, "Get ready." Are you ready? I'm, I think I'm ready. Get ready. You okay. got. You got to be ready for this. Everybody, get ready if you're watching this. Brace yourself. Grip the edge of your chair. <laughs> 
because oh, right out of places, right out of places to go. A quick time event. Nice. <laughs> With, I don't even think this was in the era where quick time events were unusual. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you weren't ready, James. No, I wasn't. But in a way, I'm the most ready I've ever been. <laughs> uh, Mitchell looks an awful lot like the uh, the character model for Agent Smith. Oh yeah. To the Matrix. Wait, no, Path of Neo. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Probably <laughs> both. <laughs> Uh, he does a bit, actually. You're not mm. wrong. Yeah. All right, I'm going to win this quick time event. Okay, just do it real quick. Yeah. But as I was saying, like this, telling you to get ready for a quick time. Mm. This defeats was, the point of quick time. Yeah, and it was also past the point where people, like people know what they, people knew what they were at this point. Yeah, for time, sure. You know what I mean? It's 2008. <laughs> Unless this game was designed specifically for you know like 65 year old men who are huge <laughs> fans of James the James Bond movie franchise, <laughs> but they've never played a video game before. You might 100 percent be correct. Mm. Here we go. Ooh, action aplenty. This quick time event is really exciting. Did you just fail that quick time event? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing really well in this quick time event. I can't tell. Event. Some of the bosses, there's one in particular you fight later in a museum because I played most of this to pick the level I thought which would uh -huh. be the most cinematic yeah. for YouTube. Uh, the quick time events sometimes just don't respond and you're just stuck in an yeah. endless loop. Quick bond, headbutt that crate, get a star, become invincible. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there's a rope. Yeah, you happy great. with that? I'm very happy with it, yes. This is just like the movie. What do you think about the uh, the character models? Not bad for Not PS2, bad, sure, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, think it, I think it wavers scene to scene. Oh, totally. he, has, he has his signature dead eyes, though, so that's accurate. That's what I love about him. Mm. And that's it. It's not the best, but considering, again, the limitations and the fact it was on a dying system. Then it is the best. Then it is the best. It's the best one you'll ever know. So, uh, please, if you could... Get a hold of Quantum of Solace on the PlayStation 2. Go on We're getting eBay. a little kickback. Yeah. Shiny Entertainment is giving us <laughs> 25 cents for every purchase of this game you make on eBay. That's it. Also, for next week's game, we had one option for the movie Skyfall. <gasps> and it's something that I never thought we would have to return to. And I'm not happy about it. And it's cost me money. <laughs> <laughs> and sanity. Yeah. Anyway, let's get out of here. Let's get back into the real world, Mason. And out of... The, uh, what are we doing? Did we're, we're, we're trapped in the James Bond universe. Okay, that's right. That is happened. it? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. I love this bit. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. All right, this has been uh, Quantum of Solace. And, and all things considered Bond movie, it's fine. I don't, I don't mind it. Yeah. You know? Maybe his best overall look. The Midnight Blue Tuxedo with, mm -hmm. the, shawl, with the shawl lapel, James. Well, that's a good point. We, that's I, an homage yeah. to Sean Connery's first appearance in Doctor No, I'm pretty sure. You're pretty sure? Mm -hmm. What if it's not? Should we just leave this in anyway? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Someone yeah. will correct us. Uh, guess what, though? We're coming back next week because we are talking about the biggest Bond movie of all time. Oh, my goodness. Skyfall. Some say it's the best. That's right. Some, I think they're wrong. We'll talk about it. No, let's do it now. Okay, <laughs> settle in, everybody. We're doing another 20 minutes. <laughs> nah, no, let's do it next time. Yeah, so I look at people consider it having the best song. Uh, mm -hmm. People hate the song from this one. Amy Winehouse was supposed to do this one. Uh -huh. Didn't end up happening for various reasons. The writer's strike. I don't think that was it. I oh. think it was more personal problems that I'd rather not get into. Okay. But yeah, look, first of all, what are your thoughts on this movie? Second of all, if you've got any opinions on what you want us to look at for Caravan of Garbage, leave it below. Or even video games, you know what I mean? What yeah. do you want us to look at? Mm -hmm. Also, if you do want to see this early, which I know you do, Mason, you can actually sign up. I see them the earliest. It's only going to cost you $9 a month, Mason. Actually, that's not true. I hear them the earliest. <laughs> uh, if you go over to bigsandwich.co, they've got early videos. We do bonus podcasts. We do movie commentaries. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that actually comes out there a day early on Sunday as opposed to Monday. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. We love James Bond. It's true, we do. We love them more than you. If you're the biggest James Bond fan, guess what <laughs> we are. If you think you know the most about James Bond, wrong, you're wrong. We'll beat you up. You didn't know the thing about the shoes. We do Change your shoes. That's right. I told Mason that. That's yep. how he knows. Yeah, that's right. And now we both knew it. Yeah, I was fine. I was very content in my life. He told me the thing about the switching of the shoes and now I'm mad about it. I didn't even notice the shoes. Do you even see his feet in any of those yes. things? Okay, then. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Grab that chair. We'll see you next time.